Hi everyone, this is Mike from EVSwap. Today we're going to talk about the pre-charge circuit for a high voltage system, like for this Tesla drive you see back here. And uh, before we get started on the details about the circuit, I thought I would uh, show you around my test bench a little bit here. All right, so in case you're wondering what this crazy contraption is, it's uh, my test bench. So I am not comfortable with electronics. I'm a mechanical guy, and uh, makes, stuff makes sense to me when I can see it, uh, and sometimes that's a little tricky with electronics. So what I did was I set up this test bench, and I'm going to try and wire as much of the car here uh, on the bench where I can get to it and, and work with it more easily, and then uh, eventually transfer, transfer it over into, uh, into the Porsche. So I kind of thought I'd go over this with you real quickly. Here's our Tesla drive unit. It's a sport model that we got from Stealth EV. And then uh, below here, you'll see this is the battery pack from a 2017 uh, Chevy Volt. Got this from a junkyard uh, in Tampa, So, uh, which these days a junkyard is just a, <laughs> a giant warehouse, at least in this case. But uh, we picked them up, and uh, I took the casing apart, and. Uh, and set them up here. And then uh, lastly, we have kind of some of the components that it takes to make this uh, drive unit spin. Now the kit that you get from Stealth EV has a custom wiring harness that comes out of the back of the drive, which is right here. And uh, there's, there's kind of a lot to it, but when you first hit, hook it up, there's really only a couple wires that you need to connect in order to actually make the drive spin. So I thought I'd go over that real quickly. Um, obviously, you need a 12-volt battery. I'm using a lithium-ion 12-volt battery. I don't know if eventually that's what's going to make it in the car, but uh, for work here, uh, it seems to be doing the job okay. And then I just have some little bus bars here to split out the power. <clears throat> this is the pre-charge circuit, which we're going to talk about in detail in a couple minutes. And then, uh, and then I have just a couple little... El Cheapo junction boxes that run down uh, to the drive itself. Uh, and then there's a uh, gas pedal, Tesla gas pedal, and then this sort of mess of wires. And it looks, it looks a little complex, but there really isn't much to it. There's a hot lead that has to be hooked up here as well as a ground. And then uh, you plug in this, this is the reverse drive neutral, the little control, and you know, just a Molex connector. And then we have a start uh, button for it, which is just a, like a pulse signal that gets sent down, um, a momentary signal. And then here's cruise control, which I don't know why I hooked up, because we're not going to be doing cruise control here on the test bench, I don't think. And there are some few other connectors that I haven't hooked up. Like as an example, this is for the uh, brake transducer. And I probably won't bother to hook that up until we actually get into the car. And then here's the Molex uh, connector that goes to the brake pedal. So, like I said, there's probably only about six or seven wires in here that you actually have to hook up, and they're all labeled. If you look, you know, closely here, you'll see, you know, this says it's the vehicle chassis ground, so that was pretty easy, right? So just hooked it up to our bus bar over there. And, uh, and then with this sort of simple setup in place, gas pedal, gear selector, this is just an on-off switch, power button, 12-volt battery, and a pre-charge circuit, you can pretty much get one of these drives to spin. Now down the road, of course, there's a lot more work to do. We have to make this guy work. So this is an Orion BMS, and it has to be wired in individually to every one of those cells down there, which I, I think there's 96 of them. And then you do have to have cooling. So I've kind of mounted this temporarily for now <clears throat> as a catch can for the cooling system. And of course, you have to have a, a battery charger. And this is a combination battery charger and DC to DC converter that will convert the high voltage of the batteries, you know, at 360 volts plus or minus uh, to 12 volts so that you can then charge up your 12 volt system, which the car needs. And, uh, but none of this stuff is hooked up. So that's, uh, that'll be down the road. But today we're going to talk about this guy right here, uh, which is the pre-charge circuit. And it took me a little bit of reading to sort of figure out uh, how to hook it up and what it does. So let me go over the details with you now. Okay. All right, so let's talk about the pre-charge circuit. Okay, so ideally you have a Tesla drive unit and you have a big battery. 
The battery is 360 volts, thereabouts. And then this is our Tesla drive. And then ideally you're gonna hook up the battery to the drive, maybe like this. Well, so the first thing is obviously you don't want the battery to be hooked up to the drive unit all the time. So you're gonna put a switch in place here. And, uh, and the switch will you know, turn off when you want the car to be turned off. So the switch that you would typically use is one like this. Uh, this is a, it's a relay basically, for some reason they call them contactors, not exactly sure why. But they, uh, they're heavy duty, so uh, this thing is, is really very solid and, and these are the two leads that will turn it on and turn it off. And then it's basically making a connection across these two poles. So uh, that, that's what the circuit would look like and you would have our two little leads coming off here that would be hooked up to some sort of a 12 volt switch that would turn on and off this contactor or relay, or whatever you want to call it right here. But the problem with this setup is that when you turn this contactor on, 360 volts would rush into the drive, really here into the inverter part. And it's not really, it's not really made to receive that much electricity all at once. Um, it's dangerous and it would damage the inverter. So instead what you do is you say, all right, well that's no good. What we need is a pre-charge circuit. So what the pre-charge circuit is gonna look like is we still have our contactor here that basically is our giant switch that eventually will make the connection between the battery and the drive unit. But before it does its job, we also are gonna build another little circuit around here. And this circuit is our pre-charge circuit, has three components to it. So it's got first a fuse, and next a resistor. I think this is what electrical people use a resistor as. And then finally over here will be uh, a relay, a switch. And then it'll go into here. All right, and then this relay will be hooked up to uh, your 12 volt system as a switch. Okay, so what will happen is when the car first starts up, this connection remains open, um, but this relay will close. And so your 360 volts will flow over here through the fuse, through the resistor, through the relay, and into the Tesla inverter. But because we have a heavy duty resistor in line here, uh, it's much less electricity is flowing into the drive. And it does that for about a second. And then once the inverter says, okay, I'm good to go, then another signal will come through and close this switch. And then the full 360 volts will be able to go all the way into the Tesla drive. So that's basically how a pre-charged circuit uh, works on paper. Let's look at it uh, in reality. Okay, so we looked at the pre-charged circuit on paper, and now here it is uh, in reality. So we basically have four components here. So we have the contactor itself, and, and then when the full electricity is flowing, then it comes in here, and then bridges across these two poles and goes all the way here, which goes down to the drive. But that doesn't, it doesn't start that way. So what happens is, when you first turn the car on, this relay will close and the power will come from this pole over to through the fuse that's a 600 volt fuse then over here to the resistor and then of course the relay is closed and it'll come over here and then flow on down to the tesla drive unit so if we turn the system on you can kind of hear this relay throw the little one in fact i'll turn it off again and then i'll turn it on so you can hear you can hear this resistor close, excuse me, this relay close. So now we have electricity uh, flowing through the pre-charged circuit. And because the resistor, of course, limits the, uh, the amount of current that flows through. So that basically allows the inverter to get started. And then when we press the start button uh, right here, what it'll do is it'll close these contactors over here and then the full amount of current will be connected to the drive. So I'll keep the camera on this guy and it makes a very distinctive sound uh, when it closes. So you can hear that. So now uh, these two poles are connected and now the electricity is flowing uh, straight through these wires and it's kind of bypassing this. this. All this is still hot but there really isn't any current flowing through here because that's sort of the nature of electricity is it likes to flow through the path of least resistance. 
So now that we have the pre-charge circuit sort of set up and working correctly, I do want to point out a couple things. So some, some wiring diagrams that you'll find online will actually have a second pre-charge, or not second pre-charge circuit, but a second contactor. And so if you notice, the, this is the negative lead coming off the battery. So it comes right off the battery, and it comes up here, and then goes straight into the Tesla drive unit. So a lot of people will recommend that you use a second contactor here to sort of you know, break the connection between the battery and the drive on the negative side. So I do have a second contactor, and I do plan on doing that, but I probably won't do that until I build the high-voltage uh, box and put all the components inside of it. So that is why I have a second one. And then the other thing I want to point out here is... Uh, <laughs> you see me pointing my hand, it's quite far away. So those terminals are hot, and it's really quite dangerous for you to have 360 volts uh, exposed like that. Um, I'm very careful when I work here on the bench, but I just want to point out that it is pretty dangerous. I use a, when I got my Chevy Volt Pack, it had a disconnect on the top of it. And so I did uh, wire the disconnect into the circuit. So when I'm not making videos and wanting to spin the motor, uh, I actually disconnect it here. And then I also unbolt each of the batteries from each other. But I just wanted to point out that you need to be really careful. I do have covers over these guys here, but, uh, but that's exposed and that's dangerous. And if you touched it, it, uh, it hurts like heck. Ask me how I know. All right, well, so now that we have everything hooked up, all we really have to do is put the unit into drive. And when we hit our, I keep calling this a gas pedal. And I think that's kind of funny. It's because I'm old and this is how you mash the gas. Of course, now I think the appropriate term is to call it a throttle. So when you hit the throttle, now uh, the drive unit will spin. And if, uh, if anyone watched the previous video where we swapped out the controller board in the unit, uh, you might recall that the drive was spinning backwards last time after I got everything hooked up. And that was just a software setting uh, in, the, uh, in the control software. So I fixed that and now the drive is uh, spinning the correct direction. All right, so next up we are going to figure out how to wire uh, the Orion 2 BMS to our uh, Chevy Volt battery pack, and I've got the software installed on my computer, at least I'm getting that done. So that's what I'll do next. Thanks for watching the video.